How we doing, everybody? Get you adjusted here. Uh, a little breezy out here today. A little stormy to the west. A little dark out that way, as you can see. I uh, just looked at the radar. It's kind of going uh, from south to north and to the east a little bit. I think it's going to miss us. I really do. Um, so far this morning, I had to charge you all up and I've cleaned out our old Malibu. As you can see it over there. Um, my son and his girlfriend had it most of the winter while her car was down. We got her car fixed and got my Malibu back and uh, got it cleaned up. Even threw some wax on it real quick. So um, kind of breezy out here if you can't hear me. I'm sorry. Um, this wagon right here has a bent center pole and is tracking off a little bit. I think I'm going to get the four wheeler and move it inside. We have another center pole that we can use. Um, we're not sure how this happened. We're thinking maybe um, backed into something, but not sure if you can see that. It's got a pretty good bend to it right there. Um, that pole's got to come out. Uh, it's tracking crooked down the road. I kind of see a little mark here in that front bolt uh, where the paints wore off of it a little bit. It is uh, tracking off down, going down the road. So a bent center pole will do that. So that is going to go into the barn here in a little bit. And I'm going to get that out. Basically just unbolting the two bolts there and uh, throwing another center pole in it that we have. I hope it's the same size. Uh, Chad just took one out of a 20 footer to make a 26 footer. So that pole may work. I think I may do that a little bit. Like I said, again, apologize for the wind. You hear thunder in the background. Yeah, it's getting with it off to the west here. Yeah, concrete's still damp in here. Yeah, go on. Um, but yeah, Dad is in the hospital for a three-day thing. Uh, they changed his heart medication, and they want to see how that's going. His heart has been out of rhythm. Uh, they call that AFib. This is the second or third time that's happened now, so now they're trying a medication if it doesn't work. Then uh, tomorrow morning sometime, you're going to shock his heart to put it back in rhythm, and let's just hope it stays. So, because um, your heart not being in rhythm, man, really wears you out, wears you down. And uh, he, you know, he's one to get out and do things. So, uh, I think I was over there from about uh, 8 to 9.30, something like that, and I uh, spent some time with him. He's trying to watch some videos. He's not... Uh, real technical savvy neither am i but i do know how to watch youtube and get on the internet but uh i'll teach him that stuff and uh he's got a laptop in there of my mother's and uh, uh he's watching videos and stuff looks like i'm the one feeding this morning cats anyone huh how you doing harry uh my cousin andy is at home uh with her grandson, he's not feeling well, and I told her I'd feed everybody, so she was gonna wait till he got up and get over and feed. Now, I get it, so I get to doing that. You guys hungry? Yeah? Donkey stayed in last night because Mother Nature decided she was just gonna pee all over us again yesterday and yesterday evening, so that's that. Plan is here in a while to get everybody fed. I need to go to the gas station, get my morning caffeine. And then uh, I'm gonna try to get over to the hospital to see dad. He's supposed to be coming back home tomorrow morning. All right, you guys are getting impatient. Ladies, all right, I'm gonna get the feeding done. See you in a bit. Cooper, you're next. Looks like you tried to uh, get into this box here. I'll look at you. I'll get you some uh, Hey, out just a little bit. There you go. Get the donkeys out here. How you girls doing? Sorry, the camera's moving around so much. Get this thing undone here. Jeez, oh, Pete. Let's go, ladies. Fancy. That means you too. Um, that way. Come on. Pretty sure Fancy here is a lot older than Hopi over there. She is a little stubborn. Let's go. No one's in your way. Let's go. All right. Oh my gosh. 
Maybe she can't see very well. I don't know. All right, that's latched. I'll get that back in a minute. That's going to have to be cleaned out. going to have to dump the wheelbarrow. Got the Mahindra running to warm up because I need to get round bell out to the cattle. All right, we need to get the hay right here. The grass must be greening up there and there must be a little bit to eat. Oh, here comes Shiloh. Hey, that's mine. That's mine, he says. That's the old man trot. <laughs> ah, they're gonna come up and eat a little bit of hay. I better get a little bit more. Cats. I swear, if I see a mouse running around this barn, somebody is not doing their job. Threw them out some hay. And I uh, need to go get around by out there for the cattle now. But yeah, so there's toxic things in hay sometimes, weeds, things like that, if I see it in a field, uh, to get it cleaned up or whatever, to hope that the next cutting is good or whatever, uh, we usually just put it in round bales. And uh, so, and now they're all gonna fight over hay. Whatever, there's plenty of hay in there, go eat it. They are waiting on me, I can hear them moving out there. A little chilly out here this morning and damp. Yeah, whatever. I, like I said, I don't know who made Mother Nature mad, but uh, she she is uh, not happy. Morning, everyone. Anyone else in a uh, Easter hangover? Uh, this morning, been busy so far. Been on the phone, been on emails, been uh, been on the phone some more, and uh, making deals and setting up things for this week. We're looking at uh, 70 degree temperatures this week, so I'm gonna get some things done. That's for sure. Right now we're headed over to the gas station and then we're gonna head over to Dana Wiseman's to pick up some alfalfa hay. Got some going to uh, Melissa on Hoop Road and then uh, over to Starbuck Road for Marta at uh, MPE. So busy morning here for a little while. Dad is on his way to uh, take a piece of paper to get signed on a, a piece of property in Zinia that uh, um, we had a few years back. There was a little family dispute and now it looks like we're back in there again, but I want to get papers signed saying that we are allowed to be there, so. I uh... only needed 50 for my delivery tomorrow, but I went ahead and picked up 70. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the grapples on the loader and I'm gonna put them up there in the barn to set them. I'm gonna need them, so I went ahead and grabbed 20 extra. So, yeah, I'm gonna go get my grapples on the loader and uh, we'll get these off. And then I got something to do after that. So, beautiful day, and we are due. We are due for beautiful weather. Huh, do, get it? Um, Ethan, I stole your shirt. So, an update on Dad. Uh, he did finally get back from the hospital there Friday afternoon. His heart is in, is back in rhythm. So, that's a good thing. Uh, it says he feels better. He has his energy back. And uh, He's doing things. In fact, right now he is, uh, should be just about in Wilmington, if not there right now, master feed mill. He is picking up orchard grass seed for me because Rural King doesn't seem to have it and they don't know if they're getting any in. I bought some earlier this spring, what I've already planted and the alfalfa seed. It was uh, last year's seed, which grass seed will lose some of its germination rate, but so I did buy it at 50% off. 
along with the alfalfa seed because it said on the tag, sell by 822. Pointed that out, they gave it to me 50% off. Came back to get more, everything was gone. I think I told that story before, but yeah. Somebody snagged it or not sure what they did with it. It wasn't in the dumpster. I went and looked at the dumpster later on. They, they did something with it. Other stores say they have it. Springfield, Huber Heights, half hour, 45 minute drive. Um, I could go to Hillsboro also, almost an hour drive to uh, go get it. Chillicothe, about an hour. I'm not doing that. Plus it's probably last year's seed. Uh, my buddy got back to me from r &L Global Logistics, Brian Bird. You're down there in uh, Florida. Uh, he got back to me and uh, gave me the rate uh, for getting hay out to California uh, for a customer out there and uh, surprisingly came back um, what I thought was a pretty decent price. Uh, $4,776 to get um, a dry van 53 footer out to California, 2,500 miles. I didn't think that was too bad. I didn't break it down per mile. Maybe I should have. You can do the math, 2,500 miles, 4,776. It was $3.31 a mile to Pennsylvania, and I thought that was good. Um, and I messaged him, I messaged him what I would want uh, for a bale of hay. Uh, his price per bale is coming out to 14, just under $15 a bale. That's pretty good for uh, getting hay way out there from Ohio. Um, I do know that they're selling that same type hay down in Florida right now, $25 a bale. So, um, he's getting a good deal. All right. Well, I just got the 20 off there that I needed to get off there. There was 50 left on here for my delivery tomorrow. What are you doing down there? You're supposed to be up there. Okay. See if I can do this one handed. Wouldn't be the first time. How about that? <clears throat> All right, these little things, I have not seen a baler yet that does not do that with the twine every time it makes a knot. Yeah, I don't know. I guess if you counted those up over a year's time, that'd be some twine, wouldn't it? That would be some twine. Of course, look what all I waste on the round bales. All right, I won't tie that down for tomorrow. I'm gonna back it into the barn. They said there's a chance of a light frost tomorrow. Anyone ever have just strange random things happen to them that are very unexplainable? I mean, it happens around here all the time. So, uh, looking in my box because I'm going to take the other truck and go up to the bank. Leave this one hooked to this trailer for tomorrow morning. So I thought, well, okay. Um, I need to grab my wallet out of my box. Like I said, this is my man purse box. Whatever. Um, everything I need is in there. Uh, reaching in there to get my wallet and... Couldn't find my wallet. Come to find out it was on the console of my truck. Found it. But there is a glove in there. For no reason at all. Just a glove. Doesn't even look like I've worn that lately for anything. It looks like it's been through the washing machine. I do wash these sometimes, but they shrink up pretty bad. But, uh... Was not in there earlier. And there's just one. Makes no sense. Makes no sense unexplainable things i don't know so grab the money grab my wallet grab my phone get to the other truck and see what else is unexplainable which that's not the first unexplainable thing today uh dad calls said, where are you at i said i'm just around the corner be back in a minute why and uh he said uh well shiloh and the donkeys are out what what how's that happen cattle are up here getting water um got him back in pretty easily shiloh actually ran into the barn didn't you shiloh but um this gate here was open which he thinks i'm going to do that for him right now this was open this bar was kind of like boom like that this was open shiloh and the donkeys were out don't know how that latches this was down can you explain to me how maybe he reached around here with his nose bumped that latch Here's the other theory I have, because I looked back on the cameras and I couldn't find the act. I just seen a donkey was out here. But either when the kids went here yesterday, grandkids and stuff, uh, somebody bumped that latch or, or hit the latch. And the horses and donkeys, I think it was I think it was one of the donkeys, finally figured out that, hey, they can open that. It's open. 
uh, Rocker and Cooper stayed in. So did Arrow. I don't think they knew it was open. They were down at the bottom of the hill. Thank God. But Shiloh actually walked back in here to the barn, stood out there. I went and opened the door here, and he walked in for me. No problem. He's like, huh, I'm too old to mess with this crap. I'm not running no more. Buster. Buster, come here and talk to me. Your tail rattles a little bit there with the mud on it. Come talk to me, Buster. Come here. Come on. You know you want to. Come on. I put that brush off the end of her broom down there the other day to, uh, by the way, I'm filling up the water. Um, so they could rub on it. Yeah, they rubbed on it, rubbed it right off the wall. These guys will drink some water. Uh, they will drink, uh, so this is 50 gallon. They will drink three of these in one day. For sure. Just gotta stand here as it fills up. Don't wanna walk away and flood the barn like that's never happened. I think I'm gonna call it a night here. Uh, I just worked on the uh, four-wheeler sprayer a little bit. I uh, got some plug nozzles and stuff, and then I found a bunch of stuff in the tank, so I flushed it all out. <sighs> Everything still seemed to work. I don't know that I drained that last winter, so I think I got lucky, but uh, I think it kind of drains itself off. Get this water turned off here, but um, I'm gonna deliver in the morning, nine o'clock, uh, just outside of Zinga, and uh, I'm gonna stop by and get some. Uh, yeah, my voice still sounds terrible. I'm gonna stop by and get some nozzles. Uh, some of them are plugged up. Still some off the other sprayer back here um, that Chad and I built out of a trailer. Um, don't know if that'll get used this year or not, but. Uh, I don't like to use it as much. We can't use it behind one of our tractors because of the type of uh, pump that's on it. Uh, it runs off of hydraulics. Our tractors aren't set up for that. So uh, we need to get a different type of pump on that, I'm guessing. Now we are on our, on our way to Xenia, 50 bales to a customer. This will be the second time I've been there and uh, get her taken care of. Also got a uh, call late yesterday evening. I had just gone to bed, it was about 10.30. Um, our customer in Pennsylvania would like another semi load. She's not going to have enough to make it through to their first cutting or ours. So she's looking for hay, um, which is a problem because we're out. So the search is on. I'm going to be looking for hay. It's always hard to find hay this time of year. This, this is the tough time of year to try and find hay. And as I'm finding out, I think, uh, this year, everyone is uh, feeding, uh, more hay because their horses, um, haven't been able to bed out on pasture. Uh, it's been too muddy or this grass is really green and lush right now, which could cause some problems with your horses. So I think that is what's going on and uh, everybody's feeding more hay right now uh, than they usually do in the spring. So that's that. We're gonna get on down the road, get this hay delivered, and uh, we gotta get some round bales down to my neighbors. After that, uh, got a busy day planned. Got a busy day. See you soon. This morning I went and got some hay um, from a friend of a friend in Lees Creek, Ohio, if anybody knows where East Clinton High School is. Uh, it's near that. Uh, that is uh, some alfalfa mix that the guy is not calling horse hay, but I'm going to see if horses will eat it because I need it. Um, it's got a good bit of alfalfa in it. A little bit of foxtail, not bad at all. Um, pretty nice bales. He said it's a third or a fourth cutting. We'll see. Beautiful day again, 70s. So, yeah. Uh, got another load of hay going to Pennsylvania, Fox Heath Incorporated. I uh, talked to Claire, the owner, this morning. Uh, she's got to have hay. She'll be out in about um, nine days, she says. So uh, she is putting a check in the mail today. As soon as I get the check, I will call RNL Global Logistics. I will get the truck set up. The hay is going to be picked up over at Cedarville, Ohio, from uh, some friends of mine that I used to do business with, Tommy and uh, Ben Seibold. Seibold. I may be saying their name last name wrong, but uh, that's them. They've got just enough hay, they think, to fill a semi. So we'll see. I went and checked it out, fed a bale last night to the horses, they ate it. Uh, let Claire know about that. And uh, she really doesn't like the way the hay looks, but she's uh, going to trust me um, on that our horses ate it. I even took pictures of them eating it. So she's gonna trust me on that. And uh, that's what she has to have until they get their first cutting made. They have about 125 acres that they make hay that she said is just not growing yet. So um you know they're just a little bit north of philadelphia their weather's just a little bit different so uh here things are growing things are growing good and uh we're gonna be hitting it soon as far as making it so uh that's that 
So right now we're following dad. We are headed over to Spring Valley uh, to do that seating over there. Larry Westbrooks and uh, Rick's right beside it. I'm gonna be putting the orchard grass in with the alfalfa. Uh, last year, our second and third cutting at his place was nothing but pure alfalfa. We need to make it a mix. That's what sells better and uh, that's what we need. So uh, I had actually had trouble getting rid of the pure alfalfa. So that's what we're doing. We got the green drill loaded up on the trailer that we've never had on there before which was a little sketchy getting it on there but I have a better plan for loading it up again and getting it back off so yeah that's gonna go better uh, in fact dad got a little frustrated at uh, the way I was doing it and uh, we nearly uh, dropped it on the fender but we're good now and it's tied down and I'm glad because I told him I said I'll follow you make sure it's gonna stay on there good I got it strapped down good but uh, I, I'm having trouble keeping up with him people shots from back here um, I'm over here in Spring Valley we are uh, seeding grass seed into this alfalfa reason being is uh, second and third cutting last year was uh, just almost pure alfalfa and uh, I actually had a hard time selling it as horse hay it was just too strong so uh, mix some grass in with it here we're probably gonna not see this grass uh, maybe second third cutting we won't see it on the first uh, it's just going to barely be getting out of the ground, but uh, this alfalfa, as you can see, uh, is the best alfalfa I've seen anywhere yet. And we got a late fall cutting off of this, so I'm really surprised that it's looking like that. Uh, I just talked with Rick, the owner. We're not going to do any kind of fertilizing. I don't think we need to. Um, I think this soil is going to be fertile enough as it is. I got to turn here, sorry. <laughs> but uh, 
that's how it is and uh, I think this is going to make some really nice hay it's going to make uh, some hay that's more sellable and um, it's going to have orchard grass in with it so it's going to be better for it and um, I'm trying to take it easy here so I don't cut up this alfalfa um, you can't really tell it's not hurting it that bad but this ground is hard as a rock and you wouldn't think that for as much rain as we've had but uh, it's pretty daggone hard and uh, when it does uh, so those blades back here when they do cut the ground if you're going too fast it'll plow and it'll turn up some dirt you might see some over there in my first pass uh, i'm actually going a little bit slower now than what i was in that first pass uh, you seen me just a second ago i topped it off with seed we were full we were good to go the rest of the evening and i'm gonna be here a while So that's done. Let me get the windows here as I drive with my knee. Kids don't do this at home. So uh, yeah, that's done. And yeah, here I am talking to my pickup again. But uh, that's done and um, that all seeded in orchard grass like I wanted to. I got Larry's place patched up in the thin spots. And then went over to Rick's and uh, did that. Did about 16 acres over there because he's taking another two acres to do s something with. But. Um, it's his place he can do that so uh we got all the grass seed in there and that's gonna make some nice hay by this fall for sure i'm, I'm really really looking at i don't know if it comes on second cutting it all depends on i mean there's a lot of moisture in the ground right now even though the top of the ground was hard as could be uh some places i was barely scratching it so if we do get a nice little rain this weekend that'll be good for that seed uh what didn't get in the ground too much um but just because the top of the ground was hard as a rock so, but that, that's gonna fill in nice, those uh, places that don't have anything growing, I'm, there's still dirt showing, so uh, that's just gonna be, it's gonna be a beautiful hay field, at, at least by this fall anyway. So that's what we need, we need the grass in with the alfalfa, that's what's selling right now. Uh, I'll turn the reds off here. They're beating the Braves right now, by the way. But, um, so, I couldn't bring the grain drill back with me. I, I'm not afraid to tie it to the back of this goose, gooseneck. There's a hitch back here. But the problem is, is that I didn't have the right hookup. I have a two inch uh, hitch to slide in the receiver on the back of the trailer, but it would have put it too low. And I didn't feel like taking the time to take the nut off to flip it around because we're losing daylight and it's probably going to be the sun's going to be all the way set by the time we get home and i don't have any lights for the back of that trailer and i don't well i could hang an smv sign on it depends on what kind of sheriff or state patrol might see and say hey you can't do that but i could put the blinking light back here smv sign and then just go slow whichever but i was wanting to save a trip over here but i didn't have the right hookup so that's not going to happen it'll be there we'll get it in the morning that's that. I'm going to get home, call it an evening, and uh, see what's waiting for me back home. I heard I've got an angry bull in my backyard, so... And I know why they're angry. is because I did not get them a round bale of hay before I left. And they don't want to eat the hay that's on the ground. They need to do that. They need to eat the hay that's on the ground, and they'll be fine. Uh, they're wasting some of it, so that's why they're angry, probably. We'll get home, find that out. See you back there. Okay, I'm back at the farm. Yeah, it's dark. What in the world happened here? Somebody wants me. Uh, I'll get this stuff picked up. It's a mess. Anywho, went up to the house. Yeah, Rocker, I hear you. Went up to the house to talk some business with mom and dad. I need to get a wheelbarrow around here for Andy to use in the morning. I've uh, got that done. So I will be going home here in a minute. And 
it's about the end of our day and we got some uh, long evenings coming up here do you know that so I um, might as well just get used to this it's only I don't know almost nine o'clock yeah almost nine o'clock hey before we know it um, the, yeah it's gonna be midnight 1 a.m. probably I don't know I've let Mike know that too that's gonna be coming to help me so uh, all is good dad topped off the cattle water I'm good rocker over here seems like he wants to have a conversation or talk to me about something Cooper has his tongue hanging out the side. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, you pulled it back in. What do you say, Rocker? What's going on, buddy? Huh? Huh? You have? Do you have a good day? Yeah. That light's kind of behind you, buddy. I can't quite see you. <laughs> no, you should be back outside, right? I heard there's a party out there on the hill. Right? I guess. All right, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, send me some comments for discounts on your hay.